So I'm going to skip the fancy intro and get straight to the point. If anyone is telling you that software engineering hasn't fundamentally changed in the past few years, they're either not paying attention or they're about to find themselves struggling to keep up very soon. I hate using phrases like left behind because it creates an unnecessary fear and urgency, but honestly, there's no better way to describe what's happening right now. When it comes to how AI is reshaping our field, two distinct approaches are emerging. On one end, we have what I call the prompt to production revolution. These are AI powered platforms that can generate entire applications, websites, and even games from nothing more than a well-written prompt. When these tools first appeared, they were honestly pretty rough around the edges. You'd get a basic app with obvious bugs and amateur looking interfaces, but the underlying models have gotten exponentially better and so have their outputs. Today, platforms like Lovable, Bolt, and Cursor Composer are creating genuinely functional applications. Tools like Replit Agent can spin up full stack projects in minutes. Even more specialized builders like Framer AI for websites or Runway ML for creative projects are producing results that would have taken teams weeks to build just a couple of years ago. Yes, these applications are most likely not going to win any software architecture awards and the code underneath might look like it was written by someone who learned programming from Stack Overflow. But here's what matters. They work. For entrepreneurs testing ideas, for startups building MVPs, or for anyone who just needs something functional quickly, these tools are a game changer. Now, on the other side of this transformation, we have professional software developers who are integrating AI into their workflows. This is being coined as AI-assisted programming, and it's where things are getting really, really interesting. Initially, most of us were skeptical. Early AI coding assistant would generate code that was technically correct but felt a little bit off. Maybe it would make assumptions about database schemas that didn't exist, or it would use outdated libraries, or it would miss crucial error handling that any experienced developer would include. But then something shifted. Context windows expanded dramatically. Instead of feeding the model just one file, we can now input an entire code base. The model started to understand not just what we wanted to build, but how we should fit into the existing system. Now, we're in what many are calling the agentic era. We have sophisticated coding agents integrated directly into our IDEs like GitHub Copilot, Cursor, and Cloud Code that can scan the entire repository. In some organizations, these agents even integrate with external documentation, APIs, and internal tools to gather as much context as possible before generating a single line of code. They aren't just autocomplete tools anymore. They author files, run command line tools, compile code, execute tests, and iterate on their own results based on feedback. They're essentially pair programming partners that never get tired, never get frustrated, never procrastinate, and never suffer from the dreaded afternoon energy crash that we all encounter. Now, are they perfect? Absolutely not, and it will never be, but that's fine for a lot of developers. Adoption rates are skyrocketing, and it's becoming a big business. We've seen major companies like Microsoft, Google, and OpenAI invest billions in these technologies. As of the time I'm shooting this video, Google just paid $2.4 billion to license Windsurf technology. Before that, there was the whole drama where OpenAI reportedly tried to acquire Windsurf, which has now been sold to Cognition, highlighting just how valuable these agentic platforms have become. More importantly, executives at major companies aren't just allowing the use of AI coding agents. In some companies, they're mandating them, and there's a solid business reason for this. The AI coding agents excel at handling the vast majority of tedious code that makes up most projects. They can generate boilerplate code, write repetitive function, create standard CRUD operations, and handle all those small tasks that drain our mental energy without adding any value. Most importantly, these coding agents don't experience fatigue or procrastinate. They're immune to that inertia we feel when we're facing a pile of mundane coding tasks. They just get the job done, and they can keep going at it while you're sleeping. It doesn't matter how long it takes them. They usually keep going until they find a solution or they crash out. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. The most common objection I hear is, well, if the AI writes the code, then how will you know what the code is actually doing? Here's my response. You're a software engineer. Reading and understanding code is literally part of your job description. When you prompt an AI agent to build something, you should already have a mental model of what the solution should look like. Read the code, understand it, and modify it to match your style and your standards. At the end of the day, you're still responsible for every pull request you submit. You've always been accountable for your code, and that doesn't change just because AI helped you write some of it or all of it. Another concern people raise is that AI coding agents can hallucinate and generate incorrect code. That is true, but in my opinion, it's manageable. First of all, you're supposed to check the code that the AI generates to make sure it's correct. Secondly, in my experience, hallucinations typically happen when the agent lacks sufficient context or when we ask it to solve overly complex problems in one single step. 
The solution to fixing this is a skill that senior developers already possess, breaking down complex problems into smaller manageable components. Design the overall solution yourself, identify the individual pieces, then let the AI agent implement each one of those components one at a time. This is why senior developers and principals who have embraced AI tools are often the most successful with them. They're already experts at breaking down problems into manageable scopes. I know plenty of senior developers who rarely write code from scratch anymore. They simply design the architecture, provide detailed specifications to the agent, and then review and refine the results. It makes perfect sense when you think about it. They have the domain knowledge and system understanding to guide the agent effectively and catch any issues in the output. The final pushback I often hear is more philosophical. But coding is a craft. There's artistry in writing beautiful, elegant code. As someone who genuinely enjoys the process of writing clean, thoughtful code, I understand this sentiment. But here's the reality. Professional software developers are in the business of solving practical problems for people using code as our tool. We're not artisans or craftsmen creating timeless works of art. If our software endures and provides value, it won't be because the code base was aesthetically beautiful. It will be because it solved real-world problems effectively. Besides, let's be honest about what actually happens when we focus too much on craftsmanship. If you find yourself spending significant amount of time carefully optimizing functions into elegant minimal expressions when they are pressing features to ship, you're probably just procrastinating. You're avoiding the real work by focusing on tasks that feel productive, but they don't move the needle. This is actually the kind of work that LLMs excel at and handle very, very well. They can take care of the routine, tedious parts of coding, clearing a path for you to focus on the truly important decisions where your judgment, experience, and design really, really matter. Some of what I've mentioned in this video are insights from a blog post by Thomas Patek that I highly recommend reading. He dives much deeper into other arguments and provides additional perspective I think you'll find really valuable. The bottom line is this. Software engineering is changing and the adoption of coding agents to enhance productivity is only going to accelerate. The skill that will differentiate you from other developers isn't your ability to write pristine code from memory. It's your ability to design robust systems, break down complex problems, and organize code into logical, maintainable components that AI tools can effectively implement. This shift isn't inherently good or bad. It simply is. Change is the only constant in our field, and the most successful engineers are those who learn to adapt and leverage new tools effectively. The future belongs to developers who can think architecturally and leverage coding agents to build and maintain high standards for the software they ship, regardless of who wrote it. If you're a software engineer looking to stay current with these evolving trends and want practical guidance on navigating the changing landscape, consider joining the code room. It's my private community where we explore these topics in much greater depth than I can cover in a single video. You'll get unlimited access to all my courses, live workshops, behind the scenes content, and direct support from other developers who are actively building, learning, and growing in this new era of software development. We host weekly office hours, Q&A sessions, project feedback sessions, and resume reviews. It's basically everything I wish I had access to when I was trying to figure out how to advance my career. If that sounds like what you need to take your career to the next level, I would love to have you join us. Head over to umacodes.com to join today. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you're skeptical as to whether you should even pursue software engineering in 2025, check out the next video after this one. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace.